Welcome to Sports Jam for the week of January 22nd. I'm Jay Wilcox. And I'm John Jacobson. Today on the show, a girls hockey thriller that's decided in the final minute. And I'll talk Nordic skiing with the Armstrong Falcons as conference and section meets approach. And in our Sports Jam spotlight, we'll meet a Champlain Park girls basketball star who is approaching a big milestone. But first, two big rivals collide in boys basketball. Osseo's had a very good season so far, and they look to keep it going against a Maple Grove team that had a whole new starting lineup but has played well this winter. This one at Osseo in first half. Maple Grove's Zach Bradbury gets the rebound put back and foul. Johnson Fowler gets the steal for Osseo here, and he zips a pass to Zach Tyson, who drives and scores for an 18-15 Orioles lead. Emmett Page explodes to the goal here and scores for the Orioles on a tough shot. And then Page will miss his next attempt, but Anthony Watson with a nice rebound and putback plus a foul. Osseo leads 32-24 at halftime. Second half, Cornell Richardson leads the break and he scores here for Osseo. And then it's Mac Wilner with a nice pass to Alex Batist. He scores for Maple Grove. Tyson finds Page and he'll hit a short jumper as Osseo starts to build the lead. Then it's Tyson with another nice drive and hoop as the Orioles go on to win 73 to 55. They have a rematch with Park Center coming up Friday. The Maple Grove girls basketball team was riding a six game winning streak coming into the Crimson's Friday night game with Osseo. Girls game the first of the varsity doubleheader played. The Orioles Brooke Heisler cuts to the basket taking the pass and scores the second of her back to back hoops but the Orioles trail by four early. Craig Moss new interim head coach for the Orioles and his team can't stay with the good Crimson squad. Abby Schulte rattles home this one to put Maple Grove up by eight. Autumn Malinar heats up from the outside, hitting threes on three straight Maple Grove possessions. She has five threes in the game. Off an Osseo miss, it's Jaden Klein grabbing an offensive rebound. She'll score in the paint. It's a 27-14 Maple Grove lead at halftime. Early second half, Paige Hinsey lobs to Katrina Tice, turns, scores, and is fouled. Tice scores 10 points in the game. Blinar drives hard from the perimeter right to the basket to score. 23 points for the senior leading all scores. Maple Grove starts the half on a 20 to 3 run. Lauren Moline gets the loose ball rebound and scores on an up and under move. Maple Grove pulls away to win 55 25. The teams play again February 20th at Maple Grove. The Wyzetta girls basketball team scored a huge win over Hopkins earlier this month, then beat a good St. Michael Albertville team. The second ranked Trojans faced another big test as they played at Park Center last week. Park Center has an early lead. Today Griffin knocks down the jumper from the elbow. The Pirates go in front 13 to 10. Megan Dubois drives then kicks it to Summer Blakemore who gets into the lane for a floater. Blakemore's held the five points though in the game. Boisetta trying to find openings against the Pirates defense. Callie Tyson surrounded but finds Annika Stewart. And Wyzetta leads 25-22 at the half. Second half, and Adalia McKenzie outlets to Lauren Frost, who fakes them and scores, and Park Center goes back in front by a point. Du Bois swings the ball across to Griffin, and she knocks the shot down. She scores 10 points in the game. Park Center's up by five. Blakemore drives and gets it to Charles Nickens. Her shot misses, but the ball winds back up with Nickens, and she'll score. It's 46-40. Park Center. Why is that up? Battles back though. Mimi Schrader gets a screen and takes it all the way for a layup. This ties the game at 55 and sends it to overtime. And the Trojans dominate the OT. Stewart scores inside. Why is that survives the upset bid? They beat Park Center 64 58. Why is that is now 18 and 0. The Armstrong boys basketball team has struggled this season, but the Falcons look to make it two wins in a row as they hosted Andover in a Northwest Suburban cro crossover game. It's the visiting Huskies that start well. Bradley Chasteen to Mason Heath for the tough layup and foul. Andover leads 12-5. Armstrong trails by as much as 11, but they battle back. Nasheen Moser kicks it out to Jake Breitbach for the three. The Falcons pull within five. 
Their trapping defense changes the game. Breitbach gets the steal and sets up Lozier for the finger roll, and it's a two-point game. And Armstrong continues to roll. Isaiah Miller rattles in a three for a 37-30 lead. It's 37-35, Armstrong at the half. Second half, and Miller finds a cutting Ben Inniger for the layup despite the collision on this one. And Miller has a good game for Armstrong. He pops a three from the corner for a 53-42 lead. Miller scores 20 on the night. And Lozier puts the icing on the cake with a big jam. He scores 21 as Armstrong wins 74 to 59. They did lose to Wyzetta on Saturday. Boys basketball teams in the Metro West are just getting started with the conference portion of their schedule. Benilde St. Margaret's and Cooper met for the first of two times this season last Friday at Cooper. The Hawks force a turnover at midcourt and turn it into points. Nathan Hill, the jail and justice for the layup and an early four point lead for Cooper. Nice job by the Red Knights working the ball around and Walker Johnson feeds Nick Peterson with a pass but he'll trails by one. Down by two Cooper's Jalen Miller shoots the Hawks back into the lead with this three ball. He scores a dozen points in the game. Check out this dunk. Benilde's Gabe Alada. The Carter up loose with a one handed jam. Cooper though leads it by five at halftime. 34 29. Second half Ante Burns. Lines up and drains a three for the Hawks. Nine points in the game for the senior. Then Trocon Massey gets loose for a big dunk for Cooper and they go ahead by seven points. But Benilde comes back late. Dylan Dreeds with a three to help spark the Red Knights who win 52-51. Teams will play again on February 13th. Well, the official high school league sanctioned section meets are about a month away for local boys swimming teams. True team section meets were held Saturday. Most of our teams compete in section 5AA where Wyzetta rolls to first place. Spring Lake Park is second, followed by Champlain Park. Then it's Irondale, Cooper, Osseo, and Park Center. Maple Grove is in section 8AA. The Crimson plays fourth behind Brainerd, St. Michael, Albertville, and Buffalo Maple Lake. Breck Blake wins the Section 2A meet with Orono second and Benilde third. Also, Hopkins was fourth in Section 6AA. Jay, the True Team State Meet this week at the University of Minnesota Aquatic Center. Yeah, it should be an exciting one. Best of luck to all the local entrants in that meet. Still to come, hockey and gymnastics highlights. And later we'll meet a Champlain Park girls basketball star in our Sports Jam Spotlight. Welcome back to the show and time to talk girls hockey and good game you saw over the weekend, Jay. Uh, it definitely was a dramatic ending, too, the best kind, I guess. Wyzetta hosting Lake Conference leader Eden Prairie. Eagles sophomore star Sidney Langseth snaps home a wrist shot as Eden Prairie gets the only goal of the first period. Second period, Wyzetta gets a break as Gretchen Branton banks in and off a defenseman skate to tie the game. But EP dominates the period. The first try is blocked here, but Becca Niss follows up to score, and Eden Prairie leads 2-1 to one after two. But Jess Christofferson's team comes back strong in the third. Branton brings it across the slot and buries a great shot to make it 2-2. Two to two. And then with overtime looming, Branton gets a breakaway and she makes it count, scoring her third of the game with 30 seconds left as Wyzetta hands Eden Prairie its first conference loss. Branton talked about that breakaway. I was like, oh my this gosh, good. this goalie is unbelievable. And I was just like, if, if I score, there's 30 seconds and we can win this thing. Like, it's great. The Maple Grove boys hockey team skated off with a 5-4 win at Elk River a month ago. Last week, the rematch on the Crimson home ice. And Maple Grove gets on the board first in this game. Elks turn it over in their own end. Riley Casibo feeds Will Peeler with a pass. His point blank shot in. It's 1-0 Maple Grove in the first period. Still 1-0 in the second, and the Elks get the equalizer. Zach Michaelis to Connor Bazal, and he scores, and it's a 1-1 game. And then the Elks will go in front. Jack Perbeck circles out high, fires it through a screen and in. The Elks are up two to one. Maple Grove goalie Ethan Hyder keeps Maple Grove in and he turns away 40 shots on the night. And it remains a two to one game. 
Crimson almost tied this one late in the third period, but Peelers robbed, and the Elks playing on. They take this win over Maple Grove 2-1. to one. Champlain Park is still in the hunt in the West Division in Northwest Suburban Boys Hockey. The Rebels hooked up with Osseo in a good game. The Rebels on home ice and looking for a season sweep of the Orioles. Jack Cargus leads the rush and beats the defenseman before popping the shot home and Champlain Park grabs a 1-0 lead. Later in the first on a 4-on-3, Zach Brash fires the wrist shot in from close range. Osseo ties it up 1-1 one one after 1. In the second period, a 2-on-1 rush. The first shot is saved, but Cooper Goodman sweeps the rebound in for the Orioles for a 2-1 to one lead. They add another to make it 3-1. Champlain Park comes back as Derek Roberts finds some room to score on the wrist shot. It's a power play goal and the Rebels are within 3-2. After Roberts ties it in the third, he gets the game winner tucking the rebound in for his third straight goal. The Roberts hat trick carries Champlain Park to a 4-3 win. In gymnastics, teams have uh, just about a couple of weeks to perfect their routines until section meets come. Why is that on Breck? That last week in an unconference duel, not on Tapper of Wyzetta here on the vault, scored a 9.225 and placed first overall. Sailor Hawkins for Breck earns an 8.55. That's the Mustangs top score. On bars for Wyzetta, Grace Trainer sticks the landing for a 9.275. She would win the all-around tit all title in the meet. On beam, Kiwi Sundin of Breck scores an 8.3. She finishes fifth overall. For Waiseta, easy trainer on the beam gets a 9.075, finishing second. Her sister Grace also has a strong showing, scores a 9.475. She later won the floor exercise event too. Waiseta wins the meet 138.975 to 132.975. Champlain Park's gymnastics team has just one loss in conference dual meets. That was early in the season against Maple Grove. Rebels were close to a season high for points last week in their home meet against Coon Rapids. Sophomore Amber Lovely singing the national anthem for Champlain Park. To the highlights and the vault, Karen McElmurray finishes with the meet's second high score, landing with a vault of 8.75. She later won the balance beam. Sophomore Cheney New won the vault in Class AA last season. Looks pretty good in this meet. She wins with a score of 9.65. To the uneven bars and Coon Rapids top performer, it's Hannah Gross. She records the Cardinals top mark with an 8.05 routine. The Rebels' Emma Saxa is good on her giant swings on the bars. She scores an 8.8 .8 and finishes second in the meet. New wins the bars and later the floor exercise too. A 9.325 here on the bars. Champlain Park scores 139.825 and they beat Coon Rapids by nearly 11 points. Jay Cheney New of, of Champlain Park there, Grace Trainer boys that are both really good and certainly should be state qualifiers again this year. Yeah, they've been fun to watch and uh, definitely have a, a good opportunity to do well again and get into that state meet and do well there too. Mm -hmm. Straight ahead in our Sports Jam Spotlight, meet a Champlain Park basketball star who is closing in on a school record. It's been quite a season so far for the Champlain Park girls basketball team. The Rebels enter the week with a 13-2 record. In this week's Sports Jam Spotlight, we meet a talented Rebels guard who is on the verge of setting a big record in the program. As Champlain Park senior standout Erica Hicks heads down the home stretch of her career, she had to learn a new skill last week, watching. She injured her ankle against Andover and had to sit out a pair of games. I mean, being on the bench, like, I've never really had that much experience on there before, but, like, it was totally different for me, but I think it was a good learning experience, and to be able to, like, see the game from, like, a different perspective instead of always on the floor was, like, a pretty good learning experience for me. It was definitely different, you know, it's been a long time since I've had to play without Erica, so, I mean, she's a big scorer on our team, so it was hard just making up the points, but we had her support on the bench. Hicks has been a varsity regular since ninth grade for the Rebels. It was an eye-opener getting started in high school ball. Freshman year I was super nervous and it was kind of like a culture shock. I mean going from 8th grade traveling up to varsity freshman was just like completely different. It's totally culture shock for me but now I'm pretty comfortable out on the varsity floor. 
Eric is averaging 21.2 points per game this season and is definitely a well-rounded guard. I'm definitely a threat on offense. I think I think I can score from pretty much anywhere on the floor. I can shoot the three and drive to the basket and finish close to the basket. And I think my defensive game has gotten a lot better throughout the years as well. Rod Hicks is open for a three. Oh, That's good. What a shot. What a big shot. In every area Very that you nice could ask for as a basketball player, she has the strength to be able to do that skill or be able to um, work hard. But um, what she brings to this team, she brings um, almost like a peace uh, like a, or a calmness over everyone. She can take care of the ball. She never freaks out at anybody. Um, and she never freaks out at herself either. So she's always calm and understanding. And she's been playing for four years, so she's amazing. Hicks is one of a group of four Rebels key players who have been together on the basketball court since they were young kids. Gabby, Amanda, Megan, I've been playing with them since fourth grade and Megan, Megan's dad was our coach. So I mean, it's super special to finish out our senior season together. Hicks is rare among top players in the Twin Cities in one way. She doesn't play AAU basketball. Basketball all year round, it just kind of wore me out a little bit. You know, kind of got sick, sick of it for a while. So I just decided maybe not all year round, maybe just play some winter. And I've really regained my love for it again, just playing half of the year. Erica's strong four-season career will leave her as Champlain Park's all-time leading scorer. She's closing in on the record held by 2007 graduate Natalie Giggler. Super cool. I mean, it's stuff me and Coach have been talking about for a couple of years now, and to actually be here on my senior season, like super close to the record, it's super cool. But I'm trying not to think about it too much because I don't want it to affect how I play, but it's super cool and special. As much as she loves the game, this will be Erica's last season of basketball. She's decided to focus on academics and college and leave the court behind. I definitely thought about it for like a couple years. It's always on the back of my mind, but then this year I really had to like make a decision. So this summer I really thought about it and just realized it wasn't the best decision for me. I mean, I've always really pushed myself in the classroom. You know, I really strive to get straight A's and stuff, and I've done that pretty much throughout my whole high school career. And I really want to do well in the basketball court too, but I realize that in the classroom it's also very important to me, so I make that a priority as well. Hicks will attend St. Cloud State and study to be an actuary. They work at insurance companies and they just like calculate the risk and like the stats for insurance companies, so it's a bunch of math. I have a few family members who are in actuaries and my, I have an older sister and her, a couple of her best friends just graduated to be an actuary, so it's just kind of been there and people push me to go in that direction. Before all of that, Erica Hicks and her longtime team Teammates want to build on a great start and make this a season to remember for Chaplin Park girls basketball. Definitely we want to win the conference and more importantly we want to win our section and go to state. We've never gone to state like in for forever so I mean it'd be super cool with our senior group just to go to state one last time for a senior season. The Rebels host Tatino Grace Tuesday in a game you can see here on CCX Sports. Sports Jam continues in a moment as John talks Nordic skiing with the Armstrong Falcons. Welcome back to Sports Jam. Well, coming up later this month and into early February, it's the conference and section meets for Nordic skiers. We're joined now by the Armstrong Falcons. We'll start with a couple of the girls, captains, Rainey Baker, a junior, and I know you're used to these big races that you've got coming up, conference and, and section. Tell me, first of all, about how the season has gone. Um, it's going really great. At the beginning, uh, it was definitely like a period of like learning. We have a lot of new skiers, a lot of... Um, um, graduated last year but we've definitely grown as a team and we're doing really well <laughs> for those of you that have been on the team before do you take over the role as kind of a coach on the trail and, and helping the, the younger skiers definitely um, I think taking on like a captain role has definitely changed my mindset I'm definitely uh, noticed that a lot more but just everyone else also that's older um, we like to talk to the young kids just to help them out. It's We're all like a big family, you know. <laughs> Your team's success that you've had in the past for the girls, how much does that help going into the next year and maybe recruiting some, some new skiers or more skiers out for the team? Uh, it helps a lot. Um, it's definitely very like motivating because we know like what we're capable of and just how much like hard work really like benefits us and like what we want to work for. Rainy, good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Lucia Scalati is a senior and one of the captains as well. And mm -hmm. how about this weather this year? I mean, you get the snow that's made for you when you go out to, to some of the parks, right. but not a lot of natural snow, extreme cold for much of January. What has it been like for, for you as skiers? It's been interesting. I mean, we were up in um, 
Bobobic, Minnesota, like so cold, the eyelashes are freezing, you're out there dying, but we've got pe people out here in shorts today. I mean, it's nice. I like it. <laughs> How about the, the conference coming up uh, next week? Do you guys look at that as, as a big meet or is it more focused on the section meet the following week? I mean, I like to treat all of them as important. I get nervous for conference meets for anything. Um, so yeah, I, absolutely. We're going to treat it seriously. I mean, got to put effort into all of them. You enjoyed this experience as a captain? I have a lot. I didn't even know what Nordic skiing was four years ago. Decided to join and I absolutely fell in love with the sport, everyone in it. I love the community. Probably one of the best decisions like of my life, to be honest, <laughs> joining. Lucia, good luck to you and the Falcons. Thank you. Two of the Falcons boys captains have joined us as well. We'll start with William Ahmet. He is a junior and William is, is, is asking the girls about this season and what it's been like as far as the conditions, cold, lack of real snow. Has it been tough for you? Has it been all right? Uh, it's been pretty easy, but some days like this, it's hot and just got to give it all what you have. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your team this season and how you think you've done. Uh, we have a great top 10. We all are like a minute to each other and yeah, we're a solid team. You've skied at Worth before or what do you like about that trail? I like the hills. I'm light. I can go up the hills fast. <laughs> yeah. William, good luck to you and the rest of your team. Thank you. We're bringing uh, Sam Himes, another captain. And, and Sam, tell me about uh, your role in this team and uh, working as a captain uh, with the rest of these guys. Um, I'd say I just have to be the, be the leader, basically. I've been on the team for six years, so I just got to try and work hard and set a good example for the younger skiers. What's been the best part of this year's team? And you get some new skiers or younger skiers to the team? Um, yeah, we do have a pretty decently sized uh, like middle school program, so it's been it's fun fun seeing those guys improve and do all the workouts with us and stuff like that. So it's been a good time. Is this a team that can compete very well in, in the conference and section meets coming up, do you believe? Yeah, I think so. We've had a few meets against um, conference opponents, and we've done very well against them. So I just can't wait until the actual conference championships to see where we stack up. Good luck, and uh, have a great uh, couple of meets coming up here. Thank you. Armstrong Falcons, one of the teams that will be competing next week at the Northwest Suburban Conference meet, and then they're part of the Section 6 meet in two weeks at Theater Worth in Golden Valley. We'll take a break and be back and wrap up Sports Jam after this. First, here's a look at our Plays of the Week. Save. And here comes Branton, a breakaway. Branton in a long score. Oh my gosh. Don't miss the Maple Grove Polar Plunge to support Special Olympics on Saturday, February 3rd. Find out more at ccxmedia.org under Cities and in the Community. Our game of the week is a great Northwest Suburban Conference matchup in boys basketball as Park Center hosts Osseo. The Orioles won in overtime when these teams played a couple of weeks ago. The game tips off at 7 o'clock Friday. Watch it live on channels 799 or 12 or online at ccxmedia.org. The game replays Saturday night at 7 and Sunday night at 10. And that will do it for this week's show. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>